In 2017, Specialized released the original Kinevo. That was a 25 kilo, 180 mil travel, aluminium, big hitting electric mountain bike. Fast forward to 2021, and we've got this radically different Specialized Kinevo SL. The Specialized Kinevo SL is a big travel, lightweight electric mountain bike. It's powered by Specialized's own SL motor, which has up to 240 watts of power and 35 newton meters of torque with a 320 watt hour internal battery. It's got 170 mil of travel front and rear and it's got a carbon frame and this expert model weighs 19 kilos or 42 pounds in size S5. It features a low slung shock with a six bar linkage that helps keep weight low and centralized on the bike. I've been riding the bike for just over a month. On regular style trails, but also I took it to some big mountains in Scotland to really test out the bike's climbing and descending performance. And this is my review for the 2022 Specialized Kinevo SL. Looks familiar, right? They definitely could have called this the Enduro SL. It's strikingly similar. It's actually only four kilos heavier than the Enduro, but around five and a half kilos lighter than the full fat Kinevo. So what we really have here is the hugely capable enduro-based chassis fused with Specialized's lightweight SL motor. Sounds perfect for big mountain riding. On these long mountain descents, the bike is in its element. The S5-based bike is 512 millimeters in reach and it's got adjustable geometry but I'm running it in the default out-of-the-box setting and I measured it having a 63 and a half degree head angle. I've got the bottom bracket set to high. It comes with headset cups and you can change the head angle if you want to go steeper or slacker, but I found it just right out of the box. As well as those big mountain rides, I was curious to find out how it performs on my local trails, the Surrey Hills. Here the terrain is quite different. Short, sharp, techie descents, and more roots than rock. So it's based on the Enduro platform, six bar rear linkage, and you get buttery smooth off the top and plenty of progressive travel after that. This is the sweetest handling bike downhill that I've ever tested. I would ride this bike down anything. It is massively capable, way more capable than I am. Whether you're riding short, sharp tracks like this or big mountains in Scotland, it gives you so much confidence. And the geometry, bang up to date, totally adjustable with a headset cup. Uh, where you can adjust it steeper by one degree or slacker by one degree and in the chain stay as well you can raise or lower the bottom bracket going down it is such a sweet handling bike and i can't get enough of it this is torridon in the scottish highlands the dream descent natural rocky huge monolithic slabs followed by endless hits of big jagged rock If you could purpose build a trail for this bike, this would be it. The bike with its 170 mil travel, Fox 38 fork, and super plush but progressive rear linkage glides over the repeated hits and the bike will go as fast as you like. Super composed, it's the perfect bike to descend this dreamy big mountain trail. Yeah. Yeah, mate. All right, you got it, it descends. What about the rest of the things that e-bikes are good at? Like 
climbing. The compact and lightweight SL motor pushes out 240 watts, which specialised marker as 2xU, so effectively you're doubling your rider power. The non-removable 320 watt hour battery was easily good enough for around 3,500 foot of climbing, and if you need to, there's an optional range extender. Alright, it's an e-bike, so it should be really good at climbing. How does it climb? There's a couple of things. First of all, the motor is the same as the original Creo SL motor and the Levo SL motor, and now this is in the Kinevo SL. I've got to be honest, I do wish it had a little bit more punch, and I had a sneaking feeling that maybe Specialized would be able to update it to give it a little bit more power, especially knowing that it's a longer travel, longer bike, slacker bike. However, that's me being used to riding full fat e-bikes for quite a long time. And what I have noticed on some of the more technical climbs is I've had a fair amount of pedal strikes. In fact, I've had more pedal strikes on this bike than any other e-bike I've ridden. And for an e-bike, it's got fairly long crank arms at 170. If you compare that to Specialized's recent Turbo Levo, they've reduced the crank arms to 160 mil. And I know they're different classes of bikes, but I think this with 170 crank arms makes it just that little bit more difficult to climb on. And I've had to point the seat quite far down and really far forward. And although it's a fairly steep seat angle, I can't help but wish it was a little bit steeper. So on the less technical but steep climbs, absolutely, you can grind it out. But on the more technical, big rocks and things in the way, it just becomes a little bit more difficult to climb compared to some other e-bikes that are out there on the market. So I started to learn to treat this bike more like a regular pedal bike with a little bit of turbo assist. See, I've been riding the full power turbo Levo for a long time and climbing and riding this bike is very different. The full power bike allows you to just use the brute motor power to blast up the climbs and plow, whereas this bike requires more finesse and skill. Mountain biking often requires us to lift the bikes into cars, over gates, over rocks, even on your back if it gets too gnarly. And this bike being several kilograms lighter than the full fat e-bikes definitely makes all of that more manageable. When you feel like Rocky for reaching the peak of the mountain, it's time to bust out that sweet handling Kinevo SL and smash it back down again. Tell you what, specialized do know how to make the integration on e-bikes totally seamless. And this has got the new Mastermind TCU that we first saw on the uh, Turbo Levo released not long ago. It's so neat, it's got a little integrated screen on the top tube giving you essential information like the battery level, the clock, the range that you've got left, but there's loads of little data fields that you can put on there. So things like your heart rate, your elevation, the altitude that you've gained, the amount of mileage that you've covered, the amount of mileage that the motor's covered. I actually think it's the best example of integration on any e-bikes on the market. It just looks beautiful. It works super easy. And paired with the Mission Control app, it's one of those that the user experience on it, it just works. You open up the app and it connects to the bike within 10 seconds, and it's so easy to customize the pages. I really like the Mastermind TCU. I think it's just a great way of integrating all the essential information that you need. What I've learned here is that this bike is at home when the speed is high and the terrain is steep. It yearns to be ridden fast. The chassis, weight distribution and suspension are incredible. It demolishes everything. It doesn't have the technical climbing or lightning quick acceleration on the flatter stuff like its fat cousin, the Turbo Levo has. It's a completely different ride. 
and a ton of people will really like it this way. And when a bike descends as sweet as this one does, you just gotta keep doing it again and again. <laughs>